are you? Good, how are you? Having a great week so far. Good, so glad to hear it. So, um, I'll introduce myself. My name's Olivia. I am a um, fourth year communications major here at Cal Poly. Pronouns are she, her, her. And I am a member of Polyreps. So we are the official university ambassadors and tour guides for Cal Poly. Um, but I also work for Cal Poly Admissions. And every Monday we do what's called Mustang Mondays, where we talk about a specific topic so that prospective students or anyone else that wants to join can um, check out that specific topic. Awesome. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, fantastic. Well, Did you want to Yes, of course. My name is Gwyneth Stubbs, and I am a fourth year biological science major concentrating in anatomy and physiology. My pronouns are she, her, and hers, and I'm one of the peer pre-health advisors this year, and I work in the COSAM office, which is the College of Science and Math, and I'm just there to help out any first and second year people who are interested in any of the pre-health careers that figure out any prereqs or any of that kind of fun stuff. Awesome. So what exactly does pre-health advice look like? What kind of things do you do? Yeah, and so as my position as a peer pre-health advisor, I'm mainly helping out the first and second year students who are interested in going to any of the pre-health fields. So that can be optometry, dental, medicine, or even nursing, any of those we help out with. We look at specifically the prereqs for the schools that they're interested in, and we kind of help guide them into that direction of what classes they should be taking, how to get some volunteer experience and shadowing, and just different ways to get involved in the pre-health community and to prepare them best for their application. Awesome. Sounds great. So for all of you that are watching, basically to just kind of give an overview, Cal Poly doesn't have a specific pre-med program necessarily, so you can't be a pre-med major um, or pre-nursing, but you would pick the pre-health track or go to pre-health advice to get support on how you could enter that field. Is that a correct explanation? Yeah, yeah, no, of course. And you can be any major and go into those health tracks as long as you're fulfilling the prerequisites for those schools. Awesome. So what kind of majors do people generally pick if they want to go into those fields? Yeah, a lot of the time it is some of the COSAM majors. So like biology, biochem, chemistry, a lot of those. But with the public health major who has been implemented in the past four years, I've been seeing a lot more public health majors. Nutrition, kinesiology is pretty common as well. But people from all different majors, from all the different colleges do come and see me. So I've seen business majors, philosophy majors, anybody who's interested in that pre-health field. Awesome. So what kind of resources do you offer specifically? Um, when, do, when should people come and visit the pre-health office? Should they come like pretty much as soon as they get to Cal Poly? Yeah, and so we definitely recommend as soon as you come to Cal Poly, just come check in with us, tell us what your plan is, what you would like to pursue in any ways that we can help you. Not only do we have the peer health advisors, but we also have our advisors who are staff advisors and they help people when they're in their third and fourth year with their applications and interviews, that kind of fun stuff. But we do try and help them in any way possible. We'll help them seek out internships over the summer or even shadowing opportunities in the local area. But we do recommend as soon as you're interested in any of the pre-health careers, come and check us out. We can talk over all the careers with you and help you find the best fit for you. That's awesome. What, have you done any internships kind of in the field that you've done? I haven't done any specific internships, but I have done lots of shadowing, lots of clinical experience, and I have had some great opportunities that were given to me from the peer health advising. So that has been just awesome. If you guys like have any questions about that, definitely like reach out to us. You can email us and definitely keep up to date. We have a blog and anytime we get information from different schools, different programs, we try and update that as soon as we can. That's so cool. Um, how, what's kind of, um, how hard is it to get into CSM or and kind of that pre-health track, would you say, in terms of prospective students? Do you have any advice for them? Yeah, and so I did look at the stats to see how many people are getting into, like, the COSAM, and it is around 32% acceptance rate, and the average GPA is between 4.09 and 4.25, around there, and it is somewhat difficult to get into the major but as long as you're fulfilling not only like you're getting that gpa you're fulfilling those sat scores and act but they want to see you doing all that community service and just being involved in your community as well and 
I did a lot of that stuff in high school and I definitely felt prepared coming into Cal Poly. Awesome. Um, what classes should people kind of be taking? Is there like a specific kind of general health, pre-health class that people take? Or is it just kind of you advise them based on where specifically they want to go or what they want to do after the Cal Poly? Yeah, exactly. So we do have prereqs for the schools that we do recommend that people like look at. And it's just on our website. And all the medical schools generally have the same set prereqs that they accept. So that'll include general chemistry, organic chemistry, general biology. Figure out how to incorporate those into their schedules if they're not one of the majors who already have to take those classes. And then we also help look at people if they're interested in going into nursing and how they can incorporate those prereqs. But overall, there isn't like one specific course that will cover like everything. They need to fulfill all these different prereqs that they'll take throughout their time at Cal Poly. Cool. Have you taken any fun classes? Like, what is um, your Yeah, I'm actually in the upper division anatomy and physiology classes right now, and I'm absolutely oh. loving them. We do have a cadaver on campus, and so that is something very unique to Cal Poly that our pre-health students get to interact with and get to learn from human donation, which is just so amazing that we have the opportunity. And so that was something I definitely look forward to when I had applied. I found out about that, and I'm like, this sounds so great. Like, I'm going to get this experience before even going to medical school. And so those classes have been so fun and so exciting because it's something I'm really passionate about. But Cal Poly has so many fun, just like random little classes. Like I'm in an aerospace class right now, and I would have never taken that with my normal major classes. So just kind of finding those GEs where you typically wouldn't be pursuing that kind of subject and just kind of expanding your horizons from there. Yeah, I mean, I'm even in a health communications class right now, which I know a lot of biology majors have to take mm -hmm. um, in that field. And it's just been so interesting kind of seeing how important the way that doctors and healthcare professionals communicate about issues affects um, how people kind of perceive what health problems they have. Yeah, no, definitely. That is a very valuable class. And I can definitely see just being able to incorporate like your own personal view on it as well. I'm sure like the professor has absolutely loved getting input from different types of people in different majors as well. Yeah, definitely. And the cadaver lab is always one we like to talk about on tours. It's definitely scary for some, but I think it's so cool that um, especially in CSM, I think there's so many research opportunities for undergraduate students mm -hmm. that, you know, aren't super common at other schools just because we do have such undergraduate focus at Cal Poly. So that's something that I really appreciate having access to potentially doing those research opportunities with professors. Yeah, no, definitely. And a lot of people do come to us asking about research opportunities. And the best thing that we recommend is just reaching out specifically to that professor and let them know that yes, you're interested in their research. And if they can maybe just talk to you about their research and then maybe you can get involved in a way, maybe shadow in their lab for a day and just kind of get the feel of what they're doing in there and they'll see that you're interested and then they'll be able to continue from there. But there's so many cool research opportunities that are happening on campus at all times. We have so many great professors who are know so many things that can be so beneficial for anybody who's interested in going into the pre-health field. <clears throat> yeah, I agree. So we have a few questions. Um, someone asked, how do we learn by doing when half the classes are online? <laughs> so Cal Poly actually has had 85% of their classes online this quarter, and I'm expecting there to be even more in person. Sorry, I said that the wrong way. 85% of their classes have been in person this quarter, which is really impressive considering, you know, we've were hit with COVID the whole of last year um, and I'm expecting there to be even more classes in person next quarter I know all of my classes personally are in person next quarter and that's saying something considering I'm a liberal arts major um, and I haven't had to do any lab so the fact that they're still prioritizing us getting that hands-on in-person learning has been really um, crucial yeah no being could back you, in person is amazing i was gonna say can you talk about any learn by doing experiences you've had within your major or within yeah so especially my just first couple years at cal poly just getting directly involved in having that hands-on lab experience so from the first day that we start most of our bio classes do have a lab attached to them and so we get to learn about so many different aspects of being in the lab specifically how to use microscope very well 
you will definitely need to know that as a biology major. And it definitely was a little more difficult doing it online. The teachers and professors did do their best to help us learn by doing, and they gave us as many opportunities as we could to go in person or get out and do some sort of opportunities that would help us with that learn by doing. But I have had an amazing time doing lots of hands-on activities as a biology major, and the labs have been very beneficial. Yeah, I mean, I took a general biology class my sophomore year, and we definitely had to learn about a microscope in that class, and I wasn't very good at it, but <laughs> I'm sure you've got the hang of it by now. Um, but even for us in a general biology class, when we were doing our unit instead of just you know reading from a textbook or looking at pictures of the plants we were learning about we all hiked as a class into poly canyon and looked at the plants that we were learning about so i think it's cool that they genuinely want you to see what you're doing rather than just reading or listening about it yeah no exactly having that just hands-on experience and actually seeing the impact that you would be able to have by like doing something that you could do hands-on is just super beneficial and I've loved every single time that I've been able to get that experience. Yeah. Okay, another question is how can I enroll in courses when they're all full? Um, it definitely can be difficult sometimes to enroll in classes, um, but as a freshman, luckily you do get locked into your classes. So um, at least for your first quarter, you don't have to be concerned about getting into classes because I want to ensure that the registration process um, is smooth for your first quarter or two and after that obviously it can be difficult I just recommend really planning out your schedule beforehand and coming up with backup options so that you can you know add as many courses as you can and then be on the wait list for lots of them um, and then I also recommend if you really need to or really want to take a class then email professors and they generally care about you know wanting to get you into that class if they have the space so um, if people drop the course or you know if you get off the wait list they'll enroll you into the class so yeah that's my kind of advice for that question I don't know if you have anything to share Gwyneth no, I think that's basically how I go about it. Make sure you just have those backup options because there will be times where you can't get into that one class that you really wanted to. And just being able to have those backup options and reaching out to the professor because like you said, a lot of the times they do want you to be in that class and they'll do their best to incorporate you in some kind of way. Awesome. So the next question is, how hard is it to get the prerequisite need for med school if you are a humanities major? Can you graduate in four years? Yeah, so that is definitely more difficult to try and incorporate those pre-medical classes into your schedule as a humanities major, just because a lot more people are blocked into it, especially first years are blocked into that first round of general chemistry and some people into that general bio classes. And so I do get it. And a lot of people do come to me asking how they can incorporate this into their schedule and how they can do that within four years. It is definitely doable. We've had so many people do that and they successfully matriculate into medical school, but it is just trying to find that balance of where you can fit in those science classes. And you can always come to us for any help that you need and we'll help you find where you can fit those in and when they're gonna be offered. Yeah, that's good advice. And I'm sure, you know, Unfortunately, that might mean taking a couple of classes over summer or having a heavier workload a couple of quarters if you can. But I think if it's something you're passionate about, it's definitely worth a try. Yes, definitely. Okay, next question. Do you have to be done with all of the prerequisites by the end of junior year? No. So I actually had one more prerequisite that I'm taking this coming quarter, and I'm a fourth year, but I am planning on taking a couple gap years. So depending on what you would like to do, if you would like to skip gap years and go just straight into that professional school, then it, it is expected that you do finish all those prerequisites prior to applying, and you would be applying at the end of your junior year. So it just kind of determines the timeline for you. Got it. Um, does it matter if my GPA is lower than what is required? Um, there's not like a set GPA, I would say. Do you think they mean lower than what is required from like med school? Or do you think they mean getting into Cal Poly? I am With not medical. quite sure, but <laughs> I mean, regarding medical school, they would like to see you have a 3.0. And if you do like 
fall a little short of that, there are definitely programs that you can apply to. They're called postbacs, and they can help improve your GPA, and they'll show medical schools that you're ready and that you could take on that hard course load. That's awesome. Um, in terms of getting into Cal Poly, that isn't a set GPA necessarily. That means you will or won't get into Cal Poly. So um, we always recommend that people just apply anyway. Um, it's always worth it just go for it and you know hope that things work out so um you can also kind of showcase your experience using the actual curriculars or the work experience section or if you've taken specific courses related to your major um the admissions officers will also take that into account does the major i choose for application contribute at all whether i get accepted or not um, I can answer this one. Um, so it does influence it because at Cal Poly, you are applying just against the people that you're that are also applying for that same major. So for example, when I applied for Cal Poly, I was only applying um, against other communication studies students. And when Gwyneth applied, she was only being compared to biology students. So that is because we do have that upside down curriculum where you start your major classes as soon as get into Cal Poly um, so it does influence it so we recommend that you choose your major wisely um, and find something that you'd be passionate about but also at the same time um, you can change your major if you want to and if you change your mind after your first quarter or so okay a freshman bucket list <laughs> is there anything fun that you did as a freshman that you recommend people do Oh my goodness, I'm trying to remember everything back from first year, but I remember the tri-tip challenge is definitely an excellent thing to get out and explore San Luis Obispo, just doing the three different peaks around the area is super fun, gets you out, gets you out in the great outdoors, especially during the spring quarter, because that's when the hills are beautiful and green, and so I definitely recommend that. And then just going to the beach when you can. That's always just like a really nice, relaxing type of thing, because I know the quarter goes by so fast. And just being able to spend a little time outdoors will definitely be good for you. Yeah, I agree. So one thing that Cal Poly does to help ease you into freshman year is what's called the week of lesson or WOW. So you will be put into a group of people from your dorms that are surrounded by you. And you will have two student orientation leaders. So a um, volunteer students that help kind of help you um kind of adapt to Cal Poly and I know that when I had WOW we went kayaking in Mora Bay we went to Slow Doco which is a really famous donut shop we went to the beach played spike ball we went on hike we made succulents had movie nights we did all of these things that are typical for Cal Poly students to do so um yeah you'll definitely get started straight away with all of the fun things that Slow has to offer right as you begin as a freshman yeah, no, WOW was like my favorite thing about first year. It was just so fun being able to find people who can be your friends for uh, the entire time here. I'm actually still best friends with somebody who's in my WOW group. And so you really get to meet some awesome people. Um, can transfers double major? I am not 100% sure about this, but I believe that if you have finished all of your general education classes and all of your kind of prerequisites applying for Cal Poly, yeah will you come here it is possible to double major um what about in the kind of pre-health field in general do you think that double majoring is an option for people or would that be too much of a workload yeah it definitely is a lot of work since you're not only looking at those two different majors that you're trying to complete and the prerequisites but people definitely do it people go into medical school with two of those majors and they have it all completed it is definitely just more course heavy and you'll be able to have to focus a lot more with those two different majors but it is definitely doable awesome um what kind of things um have you done to kind of other than obviously being involved in pre life to kind of set yourself aside as an applicant for um, med school or for your kind of future career um is there anything that cal poly has done or anything you've been involved in that you think really has like prepared you aside from your coursework yeah, I'm actually involved in the AMSA club, which is the American Medical Student Association, and it's the pre-med club on campus. And I've been an officer for the past two years. This year I'm president, and it's been just really great being able to interact with the different pre-med majors. And you also get to reach out to medical students and doctors in the area, and it's just 
really great to hear their input on things and what they did in order to get ready to apply. And so that has been really beneficial as well. I volunteer a lot. I volunteer at French Hospital, which is one of the hospitals in the local area. And I actually had started volunteering with this program called AmpSurf. And they're located in Pismo Beach and they help disabled veterans, adults, and children learn how to surf. And that just like combines two things I'm extremely passionate about. And it's just a really good thing to not only find volunteer experiences that are focused in health careers, but volunteer experience that really fulfills something that you're passionate about. And just kind of making yourself a good applicant doesn't just mean checking off the boxes. It means finding different ways to show like you will be a great physician, but this is different things that you're passionate about and that you want to incorporate into your life as a future physician. That's awesome. You sound very involved. I think that like you said though you you just want to pick things that you know not only are you passionate about but also or, and that will set you up for to be a good applicant but just things that you enjoy doing you don't just spend mm -hmm. your only free time that you have doing things that just stress you out even more so I know that I've been able to find that balance at Cal Poly definitely mm -hmm. there's just so many different things to be involved with too there's so many different clubs just to find something that you're passionate about there's like hammocking clubs and surf team clubs and just so many different things and just finding stuff that you like to do outside of school is just very beneficial and helps you balance life way better. I agree. Are there any kind of frequently asked questions? Like what do you get asked the most uh, in pre-health advising or from prospective students or um, Cal Poly students? Yeah, I think definitely the number one thing is what should they major in? And it's definitely just choose whichever major that you're going to be passionate about and that you're going to enjoy taking those classes all four years, because you might come in with a certain major and kind of like the classes a little bit and you won't do as well because you're not very excited to take those classes. And then you can always switch into something that you're very excited about and that you're going to enjoy the classes. And so definitely be thinking about that before you set in stone, like what major you would like to pursue. But I definitely wish I knew that prior to applying, just because maybe I would have applied to a different major. But I do love biology. It's never a bad route. The professors are amazing. And so, yeah, that's definitely like the number one question we get asked about. Um, trying to think some other ones. A lot of the time, it's just like, how do I fit in these prereqs into my schedule? And then just like, how do I get volunteer experience in the area? And we just help them point them in different directions. There's also a really good um, office on campus. It's called the Service in Action, Cal Poly Service in Action. I believe that's what it's called. Yes. And they have just excellent volunteer opportunities and they can help find you a specific one that you can be involved in. So definitely look out there if you guys are interested in finding more volunteer experience. Yeah, and if no one else that's watching has any more questions, I have kind of just one last question for you. What made you choose Cal Poly? And what about it, you know, considering we don't have a specific pre-med kind of major, I would say, what made it stand out to you and still made you want to come here? Yeah, definitely the location. I grew up in the mountains in the snow, and I was looking forward to living down somewhere where it was warmer and the beach was close. But not only the location, but the school in general, they have an excellent biology program. I know that they had excellent opportunities for research and a lot of people do end up going to medical school after graduating. And definitely, as I mentioned before, the cadaver, just having that on campus was definitely a selling point for me. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Gwyneth. I really loved talking to you. And um, for those of you that, you know, didn't get to see this whole thing don't worry about it we are we'll, we will be posting it on the Cal Poly admissions page as well as our YouTube page so you can go back and watch this um, and access it um, as whenever you want if you want any questions answered before you apply to Cal Poly and yeah thank you so much for joining us I hope you all have a wonderful evening all right perfect thank you so much Olivia have a great rest of your week you too bye and bye Hey there, my name is Rafael. I'm a fourth year journalism transfer student with a minor in Spanish and my pronouns are he, him, his. Thank you for watching the video. Please share any questions or comments you have down below in the comment section. Click here to subscribe and to watch more videos, click here. If you want to sign up for a campus visit, we're offering in-person and virtual options, so check out our website. Link in the description. Thank you for watching.